According to court filings, Binance and the SEC reached a deal to keep U.S. customer assets in the country, ensuring no one in the Binance Global Exchange can access them. BlackRock filed paperwork with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission Thursday afternoon to form a spot Bitcoin Exchange Traded Fund, or ETF. These announcements exploded Bitcoin by over 10% in the past 24H due to a significant change in the market sentiment, with retail investors going from neutral to almost 60 points greedy in just 24H, showing how everyone is excited with this news and ready to buy. This marks a possible setup for Bitcoin, and you must be ready. Just pay attention to Gareth's explanation. So when you look at the equal weight chart, let's go to the chart here on RSP. This is your equal weight S&P. Now, the reason why the equal weight is important to look at is because it shows us that if every stock was equal in the 500 S&P stocks, this is how the chart looks. Now, this is a big difference because look, just going back to February, we were higher than the current levels on the equal weight. So what does this tell us? This tells us that there's been a group of stocks, all right, in the S&P 500, in the NASDAQ 100, about 10 stocks that have been carrying the market up because they're so massive. Now remember, the way the S&P and the NASDAQ 100 are structured is that depending on your market cap, that is de that's how much weighting you have in the index. So a trillion dollar company, or in the case of Apple, an almost three trillion dollar company will have a massively bigger weighting than a hundred billion dollar company, right? So you have to look at it and say, okay, well, if the equal weight is showing us that this is not a healthy move, it's all sideways chop, yet the S&P or the NASDAQ 100 have made such enormous moves to the upside, 10 stocks, folks, 10 stocks. All right, take a look at this NASDAQ chart. This is one of the potential top signals on the NASDAQ 100 here. You get the current high with the recent pullback on the NASDAQ 100 that gap up on Friday and reversal. Yesterday, we had a small down day. Now again, does this guarantee that a top is on the, on the NASDAQ? And the answer is no, absolutely not. It doesn't guarantee it, it's all probabilities. So when you look at a chart like this, a one factor gets you 60% probability. If you find two factors, two factors get you about 70%. You find three factors or more, you're at 80% probability. What most investors and traders don't understand is they think, oh, there's a trend line there, it's a guaranteed top. No, that's not how trading works. That's not how life works. And I know people are all screwy on their thought processes in life. We see that every day on crypto Twitter or just in Twitter in general. But the key is it's probability. So even if you have an 80% success rate, which by the way, I would take that trade every single day, it still means two times out of every 10 you're losing, right? So you have to always remember that. And I always kind of bring that reality to people. But Looking at the NASDAQ 100, as of now, we have a short-term top on the chart. Now, we know that certain stocks are leading this market higher. NVIDIA, case in point. I mean, this is one of those trillion-dollar names now that is just going, you know what, to the upside. Like, literally, ape, S-H-I-T, to the upside. All right, so again, what I'm looking for for the NASDAQ is you have two stocks that are leading the charge. Microsoft has already rolled over a little bit. We've seen that if we look at the Microsoft chart here. Every one of you should know that's called a double top. If you don't know that's a double top, you need to learn at least the basics of technical analysis. All right, so that's a double top. Microsoft pulled back for two straight days. We'll see what it does today. I think pre-market it's down a little bit on the day. But the other stock that's leading the charge here is Tesla. Now, Tesla, pre-market this morning when I was up at four in the morning, all right, folks, and again, literally I'm up at four in the morning because that's when the pre-market starts. So Gareth explains the market sentiment changed, creating new possibilities for short-term investors or traders to take some profits out of the markets. But is it now the time to put some more money in? Want to know what other trades Gareth is taking on Bitcoin and altcoins? Here's your breakout on gold, and this is your retrace. What you're seeing here, folks, is that it doesn't matter what asset it is. It's going to repeat because people are humans are trading gold. Humans are trading Solana. Humans are trading Apple. Humans are trading Tesla. Humans are trading. It's all the same. All right. As long as you have up, up to a certain amount of participants, right? I mean, you don't want to trade an asset that has three people trading it. That's not going to give you. If you have a liquid asset where you have a bunch of people trading it, the behavior, and this is why charts work, is going to be the same because it, people are fearful or they're greedy. All right, or they're somewhere in between. 
And that same fear repeats in every asset class just like greed does. So with gold, check this out. So we have our target, which is just around 1900 bucks. I love showing this too. If we do a Fibonacci retrace from the recent move up, what is right at that level? Look at this, 382 Fibonacci retrace, right at that level on gold. All right, so what that does to me is that says, okay, so gold a little bit more down, and then I start loading the boat again. I rode gold up with members in, in the money stocks, verified investing alerts. We rode that up. That's where I trade stocks and commodities. We rode it up beautifully. Now we, we exited, haven't been really. I do have a Newmont mining position in, 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 uh, in the money stocks, which we're up on about 5%, I think, give or take. But ultimately, I want to buy more gold and accumulate more miners. Today, you have Fed speak. I believe Jerome Powell's testifying in front of Congress. That will move the markets. There will be some comments that he releases ahead of time that will absolutely move the markets. Now, let's go to silver real quick here, guys. I want to touch on silver. All right, silver is coming down here. Um, pretty nasty little drop. So again, we'll keep an eye on that. But I do have a, a one level, which will be support around $22.40. But that's not my buy level. My buy level is this upsloping trend line. So see this one down here? So if, and I'm saying if, it, I don't know if it'll hit it, but if it hits that level, that's my buy price, $21.5, give or take, that becomes a strong support. Now we could also do a Fibonacci retrace on this just to see, and I haven't done this yet. So let's just see if it matches up at all. I'm always curious. Yep, look at that. So 21 right here, anyways, right at this area here, it looks like it's the 50% retrace. So that same trend line crossing right there, give or take the 50%. So it'd be a 50% retrace of the bullish move up would be at that level. So for me, that would probably be where I would nibble, to be honest, that would be where I would nibble. All right, so again, we've covered crypto, we've covered some stocks, we've covered commodities. And I think the bottom line is here is that as an investor, and what I wanna convey to you guys is that number one, you have to remain logical you have to follow charts which help you remain logical because you can see when things go nuts to the upside, it's not the time to buy and FOMO in. It's probably the time to offload a little bit and become more conservative. Same thing on the downside. You start nibbling when things are down, AKA a week ago with the altcoins. Now, by the way, do I think the altcoins are gonna ultimately go lower? Yes. Do I think Bitcoin dominance is gonna go higher? Yes. But that doesn't mean you can't trade the panic. The panic is people panicking and exiting. There are opportunities there for being a trader. Now, again, a lot of you guys are not traders. In that case, stay the heck away. You wanna find good quality assets that you have a longer term view on, that's what you wanna do. All right, I'm a trader, that's what I'm conveying to you. I'm conveying the psychological side of it. I'm conveying the technical side of it. If you enjoyed this video, you absolutely need to watch this now, where Gareth and Ben go through the Bitcoin dominance against altcoins and which one will thrive.